Hi there and welcome to this week's quick tip video. Once again, we're dealing with automation. Last week we looked at some really basic automation practices. So how to write automation, how to record automation, and how to edit automation. Well this week, we're going to put it to practical use. In the project in front of me, I've created four chords and I've copied those chords. And I've got chord track sending those chords over to a Hellion Sonic track. Now in the Hellion Sonic track, I've just got a basic synth part loaded up. Over on the right hand side of my project window, I've got racks visible and I can see that Hellion Sonic instrument and the eight quick controls. These quick controls are like shortcuts to parameters within the instrument. They offer really easy access to get in and change these parameters. In today's video, we're going to draw automation in to get complete control over these instrument parameters. Let's get started. There's quite a subtle synth drone cycling in the background. What I want to do in this tutorial is build on this drone using automation. So the first thing I'm going to do is right mouse click on cutoff and say show automation track for quick control one. Next I turn on right, I go down to the track, select it, and now I can start playing around with my automation points to try and get a build in this synth part that makes some sort of musical sense. I'm going to try working in four bar phrases. That's a start, but I've got seven other quick controls to play around with. So now I'm going over to quick control two just to see what kind of sound I can blend in by using the resonance. It's quite a flexible and creative process and really there's no rules. I think once you've got a handle on the automation process, it's really fun to play around with the parameters using the automation. I'm continuing to right mouse click on these quick controls to make the automation track visible. The first two have been quite subtle changes, but I expect this one to be a little more obvious. Instead of going for quite a long, slow sweep as I have on the first two quick control tracks, I'm going to make this a lot more obvious. I'm going to make this work over one bar, and if it works, I'm going to repeat it every bar. Let's have a listen probably a bit too obvious, so now I can just move the automation point down. If I get my selector tool by hitting 2 on the numeric keypad, I can hold down ALT or OPTION with my left hand, and I can copy that highlighted bar across to the right hand side. To keep things uniformed, I'm also going to draw a box around the automation data on the first two tracks, and hold down ALT and OPTION and drag that to the right hand side. Now it's exactly the same and the automation is repeated. I'm using the arrow tool to draw a highlighted area around the automation data on this track. And I'm just using the smart handles to lower that highest automation point. Now I'm using the handle on the left hand side to bring in incremental changes. It's a really clever way of being able to add dynamics into your automation tracks. So now this automation data is building block by block. I'm continuing on with the automation, and now I'm adding some delay, so it just adds a little bit more movement. Once again, I'm adding it dynamically, so I'm introducing it over the course of the 8 bars. The last quick control on my list over here is reverb, and once again I'll introduce this dynamically so that it builds and adds more of a sense of space towards the end of the track. So basically I'm using the automation control to try and dynamically build this synth part. So far we've added automation just over the top of the Hellion Sonic part, but now I can go to audio effects and I can go through any number of effects, even third party effects, and select an effect to go over the top of this synth track. And of course, I can then go up and start writing automation data over the top of the synth track, like we did in the last quick tip video. And that's because I'm still in write mode. I can also go into the Hellion Sonic part and even add more automation on the internal effects inside of Hellion Sonic. When I find the effect that I want to automate, I simply go to the parameter, right mouse click, and once again say show 
the send gain automation track. And there it is out in the project window. And now I can continue to draw in automation data and affect this synth part even more. I said in the first video that automation can seem daunting when you first start looking at it, but actually, if you do it step by step, it's quite an easy process. I'd encourage you to keep practicing with automation because the more practice you have, the more experience you will have in terms of knowing what you can affect using automation data. And in Cubase, it's pretty much anything. I'll catch you next time.